Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. Hi, uh, uh, welcome. Uh, this is the, the end of the second week of the Nano Hub U course on the material science of rechargeable batteries. And uh, today uh, we're going to talk about the summary of the week. So, what did we learn this week? Um, uh, well, uh, we started by formulating the conditions to represent the uh, 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 equilibrium potential and the solubility limits of our rechargeable battery material. We started by first formulating the conditions, the, the first uh, and second law uh, statements of the internal energy for both the alpha and the beta phase. You can think of one phase as the, as the battery material, the other one as a reference phase. Uh, we introduce uh, conditions for that potential to develop, such as the energy is conserved, the, uh, the system at equilibrium, the entropy is not increasing or decreasing, uh, the amount, the mass is conserved, and that there exists a relationship between charge and mass so that when we uh, induce a charge imbalance, uh, a mass imbalance of the system, that induces a charge imbalance on the system as well. Okay, and uh, we, with that, defined three contributions, main contributions to the internal energy of the system. One regarding the heat, the uh, acid exchanges with the surroundings, a, a chemical energy contribution from component one and component two, that being, for example, the electrons and the lithium ions, and uh, we also have a, the a electrical energy of the system. In this case, ideally, we want the entirety of the chemical energy to be transformed to charge, but we always have this term over here that will constitute a loss, decreasing always without the efficiency of the system. Uh, by combining all these statements, all these statements, uh, we end up defining the conditions for equilibrium. Uh, we know this one, which is that the at equilibrium, the temperature of the two phases is the same. Uh, however, we find these non-trivial relationships, such as the chemical potential of one of any of the components, uh, uh, plus a voltage that develops across the system, it equals to the chemical potential of the other system at a time plus a, a voltage shift. So that if a chemical potential difference exists between both phases, that will lead to a, to the development of a voltage in the material, which is the one we could use as a, as a voltage for a battery. Equivalently, we can also say that the electrochemical potential, it becomes uh, spatially uniform across the system. Okay. And that uh, quantity really corresponds to the sum of the chemical potential and uh, electrostatic contribution. Or if you prefer to look at it, if we pass the chemical potentials to one side and the voltages to the other, then we have that there is a voltage difference between both materials as a result of the chemical potential difference that develops between them. And we use that given a common reference. We can use that to specify the voltage of, say, the anode with respect to some uh, uh, reference phase. And similarly, with, by using the same phase, the same reference, the voltage of that uh, cathode material, uh, with respect to the same reference, the voltage of the cell will be the difference between both of them. And leaning with that to this uh, composition-dependent uh, response of the battery, which will uh, uh, be specified, or we found it was specified, by uh, resorting to concepts of uh, thermodynamics of mixing, where we have two phases, say the, the chemical potential of component uh, component beta and the chemical potential of component alpha. And by using the common tangent construction, we find that at equilibrium, the uh, as chemical potentials are the same. That leads to regions of composition where phase alpha and phase beta coexist. That, uh, that composition in alpha corresponds to a point in this temperature versus composition map, which corresponds to that one. And this uh, composition and beta correspond to this other one. Uh, defining with that as a function of temperature ranges of composition in which phase alpha and beta coexist. Okay, and below that, uh, you will have those regions of, of equilibrium, which in turn will, uh, will, um, will define a, a plateau, that is a region of equilibrium, okay, where, where the voltage will remain flat. So you can readily see how by uh, uh, putting two phases in contact, uh, we can, we will define 
the solubility limit of the material. That is where both phases are coexisting. That is also how much charge you can put in your material. The, the width of that plateau uh, is specified by that equilibrium. Uh, regions where the voltage varies uh, as a function of composition, that is where the voltage is not constant, directly corresponds to regions where you have dominance of a single phase. Okay, so regions to the left of N alpha, that is the solubility limit of alpha, corresponds regions where the voltage is dropping as a result of only having one potential or one phase. Uh, uh, regions where alpha and beta are at equilibrium corresponds to the regions where the potential is fixed. Uh, and regions where the uh, where we have only uh, phase beta will be regions where the voltage will change again. And these, the spatial variations will be directly proportional to the chemical potential. Okay, so in regions to the left of alpha, you can see that the chemical potential of component two will be way down there, very, very negative, which uh, using the, the sign of the electronic charge will give us a very large value over here. Okay, and as the composition increases, uh, the chemical potential will come down, okay, until we reach that plateau, which corresponds to this regime. And then once again, once it starts uh, coming back up to its final reference value of zero, then again, the chemical potential will drop back to, to, to that final value. So you can think of the voltage of the system as a direct measure of the chemical potential of a material, and you can use it as a, as a means also to characterize chemically or a, uh, yeah, characterize chemically the system. As, a, as an application of this, we presented the lithium iron phosphate system. And you can see here how that region of co phase coexistence directly impacts on the shape uh, of the voltage curve. In this case, this is during recharging. And you can see that, for example, regions of dominance, that is regions where, for example, the, uh, the red boundary which corresponds to one specific particle size, will corresponds to a wide plateau, that is where the phase uh, iron phosphate, it's in equilibrium with the lithium iron phosphate, uh, will, will be shared, okay? And if I change the particle size or somehow say dope the chemistry that I'm trying to analyze, then I could change the, the width of that, uh, of that plateau, changing with that, say the solubility limit and maybe altering the stability, the electrical and mechanical properties of the system and uh, impacting without the response of the device. So uh, this slide, as it was presented by, by uh, Meet Hong, Huang, Carter and Chang in 2007, they explained why the voltage of lithium iron phosphate can be tuned so that uh, we can get the high performance response that they have, uh, that has also been reported in the literature. And uh, uh, this also becomes a starting point to be able to understand particle-particle interactions and different types of staging as, as lithium intercalates in, in these two phase systems. Okay, uh, uh, we can also, instead of looking at it from the point of view of the thermodynamics to the voltage, we can also uh, use that to tune, uh, given a fixed temperature, we can specify uh, we can pick, say, for example, for 380 degrees C, which will be around here, right, how the voltage is going to change, right, as we go from this one phase region, which corresponds to this voltage dropping, to a, a region where liquid and LIBI will coexist, which will be that plateau. When we reach the, uh, the, the LIBI phase, then there's, you can see a little blip, a little drop on the, of the potential as a result of having that one phase. And then we reach the BILI in, in, uh, equilibrium with the LI3BI, which corresponds to this width or that width, uh, defining with another plateau. And we, when we finally reach that we form only LI3BI, then the voltage drops again to, to zero. Uh, giving you here uh, an opportunity to basically control the shape of this curve given at which temperature this uh, uh, battery is being operated. Uh, and well, uh, we, sh we show this for several examples. Then we went and started to look at what are the effects of, uh, of temperature uh, giving fixed composition. And what we did is we started by looking at the Gibbs free energy of transformation, which in this case could be directly related to the chemical potential, identify 
how the enthalpy and the entropy related to the Gibbs free energy. This being a, a, a very classic uh, piece of work that you can find in almost any textbook, relating that uh, to what we have already derived, right? How the chemical potential or the free energy relates to the voltage difference. And from there, simply identifying from here and here, just simply identifying each of the individual terms, giving us if S is a positive quantity, that the rate of change of the voltage with respect to temperature becomes negative, meaning that as we always heat up a battery, the voltage of the battery will give us will drop. Okay, uh, and that the curvature, the, the the not the slope, but the how the bending of that voltage with respect to change, uh, temperature changes directly relates to taking the derivative of this voltage with respect to temperature again with respect to temperature, leading that to a to a heat capacity that we can identify by taking the derivative of the heat capacity with respect to temperature, and therefore uh, being able to directly. Uh, identify properties like entropy, enthalpy, uh, and heat capacity from measuring the voltage versus temperature dependence of our battery materials. Uh, as you can see here, for example, the enthalpy can be uh, that one could measure and use for, for uh, other situations, can be related to the voltage that one measures and the uh, temperature dependence, the, the voltage temperature rate uh, associated to the system. And here are here are some examples, and uh, as you can see, as expected, the slope is negative. Uh, when a phase transition occurs, there's a change of slope, suggesting that the enthalpies and the entropies of this associated with that will change. Okay, and uh, as you uh, uh, as you see that, uh, you will you will uh, uh, be able to identify all the different properties on on the the dependence of heat capacity, entropy, and, and enthalpy of the of the problem. Now, to this point. We have talked about uh, the properties of individual phases, but if you remember, batteries are made out of particles uh, that, that we use in composites where we mix them with other phases to make them work faster and to give us a response that it's uh, 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 much more efficient. So we're going to be doing that on the next week, and uh, when we introduce those concepts, we will assume that we know how to extract these quantities and we will just build our description to be able to, to, to include all the science associated with this at every level. Thank you.